This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. The Fall TV Death Watch begins. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Well, Fall TV is here. Yes. Which means it's time for many shows to die a quick and generally merciful death. Hopefully. But before we get to that, we wanted to cover the results of our Emmy predictions. We did that a few episodes ago. Yep. Now, as expected, broadcast networks continue to lose ground to cable and now streaming. Yes. And so here's the rundown by network of number of wins. HBO, 29, with Big Little Lies, The Night Of, and Veep kind of leading that group. Netflix had 20 with Stranger Things and 13th? 13th. Yeah, I didn't know what that was. NBC had 15, mostly due to SNL and This Is Us. And Hulu had 10, which was mainly The Handmaid's Tale. I think we predicted that, didn't we? Right. And then following that, you had ABC at 7, FX Networks at 6, Fox at 5, Adult Swim at 4, CBS at 4, a and Three VH1 at three. Amazon got two, which means they pretty much got snubbed yeah. after Transparent and yeah. all that. BBC America at two, ESPN at two, and National Geographic at two. Then, in terms of the individual awards, so we'll tell you who we who we thought was going to win, and then, and then who actually did win. And we both picked The Handmaid's Tale for drama series from Hulu, and it won. Yep. And we both picked Veep as the comedy series from HBO, and it won. And we both picked Elizabeth Moss as dra- a dramatic actress from The Handmaid's Tale, and she won. And we both picked Sterling K. Brown as a dramatic actor for This Is Us, and he won. In comedy actor, we both picked Donald Glover <laughs> from Atlanta, and he won. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, it's comedy actress, the first split. Uh, you went for Tracy Ellis Ross for Blackish, yeah. and I went with Julie Louis Dreyfus for Veep, and and the winner was Julie Louis Dreyfus. I really think she should withdraw. Her well, name. she should absolutely. Yeah, limited series award went to Big Little Lies from HBO, which we both picked. Then variety talk series, uh, we both picked the Late Show with Stephen Colbert, but the winner was the Last Week Tonight with John Oliver over on HBO. <laughs> I love the joke they did about that one. Yeah. <laughs> They, they were drinking uh, yeah, yeah, we, last week tonight uh, cocktails. You know they're so good, but they can only make it once, once a, a week. week. <laughs> um, reality competition. Uh, we both picked the Amazing Race. We thought that streak would continue, but mm-hmm. it did not. It went to The Voice. And the television movie. Uh, I chose uh, Black Mirror, Black Juniper- San Junipero. And you picked The Immortal Life of Hendriana Lacks. Yeah. And it was, in fact, fact, Black Mirror. I'll probably have to watch that now. Yeah. Variety Sketch Series went to our choice of Saturday Night Live. Structured Reality Program. Uh, You picked Lip Sync Battle. I picked Who Do You Think You Are? And the winner was neither of those. It was Shark Tank. They had to give something to the networks. (laughs) The Unstructured Reality Program. um, You picked Born This Way. Yes. And I picked RuPaul's Drag Race, Mm -hmm. and it went to United Shades of America. Yep. Writing for a variety series. I chose Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, and you chose uh, Late Show with Stephen Colbert. It was Last Week Tonight. Yes, so you're beating me now. Yeah. Uh, Guest actor in a comedy series went to Dave Chappelle from Saturday Night Live, Mm -hmm. even though we both picked Hugh Laurie from Veep. Mm -hmm. Guest actor in a drama series, Uh, you chose B.D. Wong for Mr. Robot. I chose Gerald McRaney for This Is Us. It was Gerald McRaney. Yeah. And guest actress in a comedy series, we both picked Carrie Fisher, and remarkably, she did not win. Yeah, the the death roll did not take place. I was shocked. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy. I don't know about that one. Guest actress in a drama series, Uh, you chose Alexis Bledel. I chose Cicely Tyson. And it was you for Alexis Bledel. I won that one. For Handmaid's Tale. And an animated program, um, you picked Archer? Yeah. I didn't pick anything. No, you didn't. But and it doesn't matter because, because Bob's Burgers, Bob's Burgers won. won. Yeah. And that comes up with a final score, 11 points for me, 8 points for Mindy. Yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> 
But on to Fall TV. Yes, this is what we'll be talking about next year's Emmys, right? Right. <laughs> so, just basically a, a quick word about each show per night. And if we think it's going to be a flop. Or a hit, and which one is going to be the first on the Death Watch. Okay. Sunday night, Wisdom of the Crowd, Jeremy Piven crowdsources justice. Uh, ghosted with Adam Scott and Craig Robinson in an X-Files parody. And Ten Days in the Valley, Kira Sedgwick returns to TV in a kidnapping case. Now, I hate to say right out of the box, but I think Wisdom of the Crowd is going to be the first one. I'm on. really leaning that way. It's a terrible idea for a show. Yes. And it's got Jeremy Piven in it, who, while I like him, does not have the best track record, does he? No, he does not. Uh, ghosted. Yeah, I'm sure that it's it's on Fox. I think it will do It could go either well. way on that one. Because yeah. uh, some of the reviews I've read said they're not sure if it's a comedy or a, you know. Right. So we'll see how that one goes. It'll take a few episodes. And then Ten Days in the Valley... Kira Sedgwick has a very good track record. Yeah, I think that's a, more of a limited series. I think it though, is. Isn't it? Yeah. I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Monday night, nine JKL, nineteen ninety one must see TV called. They want their sitcom back. Me, myself, and I: the life of a genius at three points in his life with Bobby Moynihan and John Larroquette. The gifted, the Marvel machine cranks out another series. This time, X Men adjacent. A valor and elite. Helicopter team, army helicopter team, where they all look like they're from a modeling agency. <laughs> the Good Doctor, about a 25-year-old autistic savant doctor. And The Brave, a story of two different but equally important groups. Ding, ding. <laughs> a DC security team and an international undercover team. Um, I can't... I, I, all right, 9JKL might also be one of the first ones to go. Uh, I, I think that's that's probably my pick because it's just such a, a poor concept. It's a horrible idea. Yeah, there's a lot of talent in there, but there's also a lot of people you've seen in other failed sitcoms yeah. over the years. Yeah. <laughs> I really want The Gifted to be good. Mm-hmm. But I have my doubts about that, especially after hearing about the Inhuman series. Yeah, uh, me, myself, and I, um, I think it's an interesting concept. Uh, I don't quite understand how... Bobby Moynihan morphs into, into John, John Larroquette 20 years later. He yeah. gains a foot of height. Yeah, that makes <laughs> Something no sense. does, yeah, I don't get quite get Unless that. Unless it's like not actually in um, in different times in his life. It's like him in different universes. <laughs> yeah. It's the multiverse. But that's not what the they're character. saying. They're saying it's, it's all different times of life. <laughs> Valor. Uh, I expect that to be gone fairly quickly. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of shows like that on this. That is, in fact, the big trope this year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, good doctor. Uh, it depends. Uh, I I I think that'll go fairly quickly because again, it's just. Entertainment uh, Weekly said, "Well, maybe if it morphs into a medical MacGyver kind yeah. of show, <laughs> that it could take off." And the Brave, no way is that going to survive. That that's gone. That's going to be gone very quickly. Again, because it's that that plethora of military drama, mm -hmm. you know, and generally. At best, one will come out of that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tuesday night, the mayor, a 27-year-old rapper, wins the mayorship. I think this looks like a cute series, but it doesn't have much staying power, I don't think. And I don't think it's on the right network. This really seems like a Fox show, but it's yeah. on ABC. Mm -hmm. Kevin probably saves the world, which was called the Gospel of Kevin when we were at uh, the upfronts. Uh, a man touches a meteorite and meets a messenger from God. And it's a drama. I and think it would do much better if it was a comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Law and Order, True Crime. This was also not at the upfronts, and it w it's a miniseries on the, Mel uh, the, Mel uh, the Menendez murders. Yes, and I think it'll do okay, yeah. but, you know, again, it's a limited series. So. And, and it's Dick Wolf, so it's, it's not like they're going to pull it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wednesday night, SEAL Team. David Boreanaz returns to TV after 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't we just see this on the other night? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Dynasty, Grant show from Melrose Place is Blake, which makes me feel kind of old. And a bunch of models are the rest of the cast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, they, they give it enough time. Uh, you know, David Boreanaz can carry a series. Right. He, that could be the series that lasts for Seal, but I don't think so. Yeah. Dynasty, um, you know, it's on CW. Uh, I don't know how much of the CW audience will get any of the references. 
<laughs> you know? Well, Dallas didn't last, did it? No, it did not. Thursday night, Young Sheldon. This is the Big Bang Theory spinoff showing Sheldon's childhood in Texas. We have The Orville, which is Seth MacFarlane's love letter to Star Trek The Next Generation. It is much better than the critics say it is. And the ratings have actually been fairly good. So we've seen the first three yes. episodes. It's, yeah. I, you know, not nearly as bad as the critics would have you believe. Right. I, it actually has its good points. And, of course, um, another sort of remake, Will and Grace. Um, did anybody ask for this sequel? <laughs> Coming soon, the Carolina in the City reboot. You know, no. I, and, and they threw away, like, the ending of the old series. And so it was going to be, like, eight episodes, and then they extended it, and now they've said they've already greenlit a second season of it. It's like, <sighs> boo. And then we have SWAT. Shamar Moore returns to TV after 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so you know this one and and um and the David Boreanaz one. I think even though they're not both military, they're both you know, I think so similar in idea. Right. Friday night, Marvels in Humans. So they premiered this show. Uh, as an IMAX movie. You could go to the theater and see it. It was like the first two episodes, I think. Yeah, and, and critics said it was an absolute mess. Promo pics that said, it actually listed when the first season would begin, now say this is when the complete series begins. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Like, I think, I think ABC has already walked away from the show, and they're like, we're going to burn it off. It's Friday night already. Yeah. I mean, if you see it move to Saturday, it's done. It, that, that'll be the official, it's done. But they've already made all the episodes? Is that... I, I believe I'd say they've had to by this point. Okay. And then Saturday night. So, Saturday night, no new shows. No new shows. Nope, networks continue to just walk away from one night of the week and just <laughs> don't bother. Well, though, they could be showing reruns of um, Law & Order M M Menendez Brothers. Oh, I'm sure they will be. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Because that's what Saturday nights are. But if you're bored on a Saturday night, you can always check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Dung-dung!